top, bro. To a lot of mechanical keyboard people, they're just like, oh, this is just a rubber dome. You know, it's a rubber dome keyboard, but. There's a reason why rubber dome keyboards can cost $20 and Topra keyboards cost like a few hundred. I think one thing that brings a lot of people to it is because of the special tactile bump that it has. Is that it can't really be replicated in any MX style switch or MX style keyboard. You just don't get the same feel. So a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I really, really like this. And also the fact that Topra also has a silent variant of their regular Topra switches. So a lot of people are like, wow, it's really way quieter than anything you can get from MX switches. That's basically why Topra works and has that demand. Not exactly the cheapest keyboard out there because technology as far as I know is only made by one company and they put a lot of research into it. Basically, it's how it works that makes it expensive. There's basically you press a key, the rubber dome collapses, the spring also collapses along with it, uh, magic shit happens and I don't know, I don't know how to explain it but then a key press is registered but we'll be taking this apart because we've got a request from a customer to modify it we'll just show you the internals and what all the parts do and how different it is from a regular mx style keyboard where's my search for uh, wait uh it's somewhere here hello there so as you can see Topo switches already look visually very different from MX mechanical switches. Especially you can see they're, they're little like round nubbins instead of your cross stem. The switch itself sits in an entire plate along with a housing so you can't... There's no way for you to like, oh let's just take out the switch and hot swap it or whatever because the whole mechanism has to be put together. You can't just like take out a part of it. So the keyboard that we have here today is the Leopold SC980C which is right there yeah honestly this is the first time i'm touching a topper board in like god knows how long mostly because people just don't buy topper boards sadly wait we didn't even do a type test of it After scuffing the first time, now take out all the keycaps again. You can see for Topra switches, there are no stabilizers on the top side. Unlike MX switches, which you can see the stabilizer mounting points here. So this is stabilizer underneath the housings. So the key is just mounted here like that. And for the space bar, it's also a little bit different. I can just get this off. Hang on. So the space bar is similar to MX style housing where you still have these two like stabilizing points but at the same time there's also a support spring <laughs> that um, <laughs> has flew off yeah but this is important because it supports the weight of the spacebar itself over the switch because the spacebar is heavier how old some of these keyboards are mounted or they're closed is that instead of just using screws to secure the top and bottom case there are these like clips which we have to pry open eight of them it's like watching a gorilla trying to <laughs> open Top case. Great success! <laughs> so yes, this is how a topper keyboard looks like on the inside. Then if you just flip this over and remove it, you'll see that it's connected to the PC. Uh, it's connected to the USB port through what we call a controller. And this is the USB port itself. This is technically the motherboard. This is a daughter board which has everything, as well as another daughter board for your Oyakodon of boards. <laughs> And this is the bottom of a Topra assembly PCB. As you can see, there are no pins on the bottom. There's absolutely none of the traces that you see on a typical mechanical keyboard. So like for reference, this is what it looks like for MX style, like a regular mechanical keyboard. MX, the reflections are crazy. And then, top, oh my god, top, top, top. So you can see these round like spots. Hello! <laughs> you can't escape the camera, you can't. Yeah, so you can see all these like round little, I guess, spots. Each one is a little electrocapacitive pad. There's, it's basically like one layer on another layer. When the spring compresses, mojo happens and then this registers a key press. So yeah, there are a lot of screws to remove on this, so I... Uh uh, I'll be honest, I can't remember which screws I have to remove or don't have to remove. Um, so I'm just going to remove all of them because the whole thing has to come apart anyway. The, the magic of the topper board you'll see on the underside of the PCB later on once everything is out. Why are there so many screws? I don't know if you can hear that but... Yeah, so that... Those are the topper of the dome. Some have fell out as you can tell. 
but they can be re easily replaced like that. This is basically the whole mechanism of a Topra keyboard, the PCB itself. So as you can tell, these are all little rubber domes that collapse when you press them, like, like so. And then underneath each of them, they have a little spring that supports a certain weight as well, which also collapses. And then it activates this elect uh, like magic electric gypsies. I clearly do not know what I'm talking about. So that can go aside because I will only touch that later on. And this is the rest of the assembly itself, which you can see all these are each individual Topra housings for the sliders. And these are the sliders. First step of this, of Topra modding at least, is that we have to remove the sliders. So that will just involve like literally pushing each one of them out. So how this is, what you do, or at least what, how people most usually do, is you just use your finger, just push down on the slider on the inside until it pops out, which can take a bit of effort. So I'm just going to try and use my spudger. So this in itself is a Topra slider. So this is what sits on top. And this is not the piece we're going to loop, but we're going to clean it up a little bit. What we're going to loop is this portion of the housing, which is the, I guess, the housing mechanism. First, let me just remove everything. Oh my god. Uh, there are about a hundred of these and I am not looking forward to taking them out. Oh. Help. <laughs> I need to clean a bit of this up, so I shall use our glorious cleaning kit available on Mecca store. <laughs> a little brush, some cloth, and a stress ball. <laughs> now I'm just gonna dust it down a little bit because there might be some residue over years of use. So for these housings, how we will have to loop them is that because the slider that goes in only goes in on two points of contact. So let me just reassemble this. The only two points of contacts for this slider will be along this edge here, where it moves up and down, as well as on the opposite face. So that being the only main point of contact between plastic on plastic. We're using a lubricant on these like rails here. Just that, that's all you need for the lubing of these housings. Yes, yeah, toothpaste. Here are two grades of other lubricant that I use. For this specifically, I think I shall be using the 203 grade zero. It's a lighter, less viscous uh, lube compared to the usual 205 Crytox. This is also Crytox, la. it's just a different grade, different viscosity, different properties compared to your usual 205. So for this, I'll just have to individually lube every single one of these what i usually do when i loop sliders or any any switch even is i'll take a little amount pull the brush slightly inside just to get the loop in between the bristles and i'll just gently wipe them off along the edge so you see there are these little corners here brush along the entire length of the rail and do that on the other side as well i'll just brush a few times because i want to evenly coat the entire rail slider rail And we are done with, I think, all of them for now. <sighs> Why did I agree to do this? <laughs> what we're going to do next will be the stabilizers. So as you can tell, this is the underside of the stabilizers. You can see that the wire is already on the underside already supported. So to remove these, I have to unclip them first. This will be a bit finicky to take out, but there we go. That is the wire. This is the stabilizer. Stabilized key. The wire hooks in underneath here. So it goes in here and it sits under the PCB. So for the stabilizer housings, these massive parts here. Same thing as the usual, because this is on contact on this left and right side. So we just have to loop this face here and another on the opposite face. So plastic on plastic, we use this PTFE. 205, 203, 20, whatever. I'm just gonna lightly just coat this on the outside. For the wire itself, what we have to do is we have to loop where, so if you can see on this, you can see that there are the clips here where the wire clips in. We have to loop these. We have to loop the wire itself where the wire hooks in so that this inside here 
doesn't create any rattle. So for the stabilizer wire itself, I'll be using Grade 2, which is a little thicker, a little different from 205, 204, 203, so whatever. You can be a little bit more generous with these because they will even out eventually and you want to fill in empty spaces because you don't want the wire to be moving about too much. So you loop the tip of the wires itself so that they so that the metal wire itself has a coating of lube around it and doesn't just doesn't move around, isolates it, prevents it from ticking here and there. And as for the space bar, the space bar is a little more complicated because this is actually a multi-part. Same thing, you unclip the wires from here. I'm gonna use this. And then we remove the housings, which I also have to lube. Although there's already a bit of lube on it. So what I'll do is I'll just like lube all the contact points around the stabilizer housing. Give that a little bit of lube. Same goes for this. Even though I think there's already some pre-applied, just to be a bit safer. And then lube the wire up. I guess a bit more generously than one usually would. So you lube on both of the protrusions as well as on the opposite side here where the wire clips in and uh, the unfortunate thing about topra sometimes is that even after doing all these modifications there still can be rattle because the rattle comes mostly from this housing sitting in this switch plate itself that one will be hard to eliminate without the current tool with the current tools that we have we don't have other there are some gasket modifications and add-ons that you can do to your topra board that will help with that that is the spacebar stabilizer lubed. So I'm just going to repeat that for the rest of these. Okay, so we have done the, sta um, the stabilizers. And they've all been reinserted. As you can tell, we've copious amounts of lube now. And then we're just going to reinsert the sliders. That's all the sliders done. We're in the final stages, yay! Now time to close up each one of the 34 fucking screws that are on this board. Why are there so many? Oops, I swear. Oh. We're gonna get demonetized. I'm sorry, Krin. Hi, we're looking for sponsors. I will need to test this. Because every good keyboard builder will always test their keyboards before building it. I mean, after like building up, I don't know what I'm saying. Everything works! Success! Yeah, let's just close everything up. So we can hear how it sounds once I put on the caps. Finally done! <laughs> You can listen to this. The stabilized keys sound a lot better than. They do sound softer. The alphas won't necessarily sound softer because they're unsilenced to begin with. There are no silencing rings. But they do sound slightly deeper. That's about it. Alright, so it's been, I think, like a good year since I last modded a Topra board. For people who want to buy a Topra, you can drop by our store to try it out if you're in Singapore. As for modifying it, please don't ask me to do it again. Although I did volunteer to do this one because I just wanted to do it because it's been a long time. But yeah, it's nice. Nice tactile bump. Always there to be improvements. There are always a bunch of other aftermarket options. But yes, do try everything before you buy. Again, like Topra isn't exactly for everyone because it's kind of on the pricey side. But if you remember the, the Nis Plum um, alternatives, the clones, you could try those out as well. Just a nice, very nice board from Leopold as usual. Just a pain in the ass to take out because there are like 34 screws to remove. Please never make me do that again. Do I like Topra? Yes, I kind of like Topra, which is why I, I spent $350 buying one myself. I like Topra just because I like to have a different collection of boards, just to have different things. I have the HHKB Hybrid Type S, which is the newest in the line of HHKBs. They have a unique layout, so not a lot of people can get used to it, but I'm kind of there already, so it's fine for me. And then I like Topra just because 
you really just don't get this kind of bump anywhere else. You know, it's, it's just unique to Topra itself. And I guess it's more of a, a quiet taste rather than a hype thing because you see a lot of the switches in recent like recent months or recent even the past one or two years have always been around strong tactility the the immediate bump things like the bobas the the pandas or the panda derivatives anything of that sort have always been the hype and then a lot of people like it easily whereas for topper right you, it's a very very niche thing it's really you love it or you hate it mr Quinn, what do you think of the topper any words from you sir i think it's interesting but personally i don't like typing on it the, the 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 bump is too rounded it feels weird at least to me i mean i'm pretty sure i can get used to it at some point but at this point you've seen how i type on it i type like an absolute dumbass on it i cannot do it I think future considerations, or at least one of the future topics we will want to cover is this versus the like Topper clones. So we have the NIST plums and whatnot. Perhaps just like the regular membrane keyboards against a Topper. And then the other one will probably be to be a contender for one of the quietest or most silent keyboards out there. At least for the mod a fully modded silent Topper keyboard. Future content. Future content. Future content. Like, subscribe, <laughs> comment. The thing you'd like to add, Mr. Manager, uh, manager number two. Uh, Manager number one. You got to uh, subscribe because you can't afford him if you don't. Yeah. Losing money every day, you know. I expensive boy. I think that's it. Sponsor us. Sponsor. Sponsored by Matt.